<laughs> Get your YouTube on. <laughs> We're doing it. Mm. What's up, guys? Drew here, and I'm going to be bringing you a beautiful tutorial on how I do retouching on Affinity Photo. Tag along. I want to show you everything that I know. So we're going to go ahead and hop into Affinity Photo here. And we're going to choose actually a photo that I, uh, that I took for a senior photo session. It's just a good example for a retouching photo uh, because it is a nice kind of close up and there's a lot of detail in her skin and everything like that. So we're gonna go for it. So what you'll do here, this is just kind of like camera raw. I just kind of get it to where I want kind of the base of the photo to be. Oh, hold on. Uno momento. Gonna let our iPad uh, pencil charge, am I right? Fun facts, fun Apple fact. Apple pencils, 15 seconds of charge gives you 30 minutes of battery life. All right, and now we're back up. So here, like I was saying, we just wanna get this to where we want it to look. And honestly, out of the camera, this already looks really good. Uh, so, <laughs> go me. <laughs> um, it looks really good, but uh, I'm gonna kinda mess with it just a little bit to kinda get it where I want it as a base. So we're gonna bring it down and you can kind of see in the top right how our histogram is moving as we're making these adjustments. That's about all I wanna do, honestly, with it. Obviously, this is totally different for every single photo, so don't go based on what I'm doing here. Uh, it really depends on how your photo was shot and everything like that. But we're gonna import it into Affinity Photo. Guys, I'm gonna show you pretty much strictly just uh, my retouching and what I do for retouching, so we're just gonna go ahead and hop into that. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate my layer by using a double tap. We're gonna go ahead and make this layer. We're gonna go into our filters and we are going to go to frequency separation down here. We're gonna go ahead and tap on that and tap on the check mark and we're just gonna hop into it. What this does is it breaks it down into a high frequency and a low frequency layer to kind of make this simpler for you for what, for my brain, because I also like simpling things down. The high frequency is going to be the texture of the skin. So if we were to zoom in and take off this layer, you'll see how it softens the photo. It's because that layer is strictly just the texture of the skin. The low frequency is going to be the color uh, of the photo, right? So if we were to take off this bottom layer and this layer, you'll see it is just the high frequency layer that is just the texture of the skin. You can see the texture of her face and everything on that layer. So what that allows you to do is it allows you to not mess with everything at once, it, uh, it gives you a little bit more control with your retouching, which then will end in a better uh, final result. Now, here's something that I also like to do with my uh, frequency separation, is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna group these, that way I can keep them together, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add a new layer in between my low and high frequency. Uh, what we're gonna do with this layer is we are actually going to paint over the skin the color that we want. So over here on the left, you'll have your color picker tool, and we're gonna go ahead and select that, and you'll notice down here how it says point one times one, and if we go through, it's gonna say three by three, five by five, and on up, right? What this is doing is it's saying that we are going to select the color out of five by five pixels. So we're gonna use that. Now, pro tip with Affinity Photo on the iPad to select the color, if you just tap down on the screen, you notice how it's not allowing me to select a color. If you move though, it's gonna pop up. Once you move, like once you get good at it, you'll just start basically dragging and swiping on the screen immediately to pick that color. Now what this is gonna do is we're gonna basically, uh, by the way, this color picker is directly where your finger is at. So I do suggest using this with the Apple Pencil. That way you can actually see what area of the skin you're directly selecting. Uh, Affinity Photo does have a little bit of a buggy kind of system with this. Uh, sometimes it doesn't auto apply like it says it's going to on the paintbrush. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure if you tap on the white here, for whatever reason, it will fill it in down here uh, for your color for your paintbrush. Now we're gonna keep our opacity and our flow down to about 30% because uh, we don't want too much. And then we're just gonna adjust our brush kind of based on kind of the area that you're working with. And then we're just going to uh, brush on in. We're gonna kind of brush in over these areas, these splotchy areas. We want them to kind of all mesh into one. And then what we'll do is we'll kind of switch back, right? We'll take another part of the skin 
go back to our paintbrush, make sure we still have that lighter color selected, right? And then same thing. I kind of brush this in, brush that, kind of mesh them a little bit. And do it again. Add a little bit more. I'm going to actually add it more on this side because I kind of want to, because the light's coming in from this direction, you see? So like we kind of want the light the lighter side to kind of go across the face. So, so you can notice like, this is pretty noticeable, right? Obviously this is not what we're, we're gonna leave it off as, um, but I'm gonna go through the rest of this real quick. All right, now we're gonna kind of take like a little rough look of kind of the before and after. So that is the before and that is the after. So you can see like what we really did is we, we just really filled in kind of the shadows on the face and kind of brightened them up and kind of evened out the face. Uh, that way that we can go in later and kind of add where we want the shadows and the highlights and everything like that. Now, obviously this is uh, a little harsh. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our filters. I'm gonna go into blurs and we're gonna go ahead and hop into a Gaussian blur. And what that's gonna do is it's basically going to take uh, what we just painted and it's gonna blur it out, which is going to kind of mesh everything together to give it a more natural kind of look. And you can kind of just mess with the radius here. You can obviously, if we go all the way down to nothing and go up, you can start to see that adjustment where it kind of blends in. So we're just gonna choose like a nice soft kind of blend right about usually around 30 to 25 pixels is usually what looks good but obviously do what looks best for your photo right let's say that we made that our adjustment and it's still maybe a little bit too much you can obviously go to this layer and we can drop down the opacity of this layer uh, to uh, if it's too much if you think it's too much if you want more of a natural look you can bring it down to do that now what you're gonna want to make sure of is since we blurred this uh, some areas might have gotten overlapped essentially. So what we'll need to do is we're going to need to erase uh, on our paint adjustment in the areas we still want those details. So like our eyes, we're gonna make sure we get that done because it might have seeped over into that, especially eyebrows. I'm gonna do it on this side as well. And then the hairline. Right on the edges, right up here. We wanna make sure we get all that off. And so that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna go into the low frequency and do something pretty much, it's very similar. It's going to give us a little bit more, gonna allow us to smooth out the skin a little bit more as well. So some of these spots that we might've missed, and that sort of thing, we can go in and kind of make it a little bit better. So what we're gonna use is we're gonna use the healing brush and what we're gonna do is we're gonna select an area of the skin, usually a lighter area. Now you're just gonna press and hold down to select an area of the skin. And then same thing, about 30% is usually what I like. Make sure you're on the low frequency separation uh, layer and we're going to kind of brush over to kind of blend everything in because we want it to be, you know, a nice, transition throughout uh, the skin. We want stuff to blend together. You wanna be careful with the low frequency because it does uh, usually soften the photo up a little more than anticipated sometimes. And I'll also kind of do this with the shadows here, brighten this up. So now we're going to take a look at the that is the before and the after. And you can go in to see a small difference. Just kind of makes it a little bit softer. You can obviously, same thing, if you want to, you can always drop this down to uh, make it give it more of a natural look to the photo as well. Drop it down just a little bit. Nothing crazy, but then here's the before and after so far. Now we're not finished. <clears throat> we still have a lot to do. 
we're going to hop into our high frequency separation. We're going to get rid of some of these uh, areas here, right? We're going to get rid of this right here. We're going to go ahead. I'm just going to use the patch tool and we're going to circle this and patch over this area. Now we're also going to have to do this on our low frequency. Okay, so now the final thing that we really need to do is we need to do uh, some dodging and burning. And what we're going to do is we are actually going to just create a curves layer and we are going to just bump up highlights on one. We're going to go ahead and invert that layer. And what that's going to do is you'll you'll notice how it is now a it is a gray layer here, right? Where the square is. That means that none of this adjustment is showing on our photo. If I invert it again, you'll notice how it has changed to a white. That means whatever the adjustment I made is showing on the entire photo. It is simply a mask. Affinity Photo uh, automatically does this for you, which is really nice. It kind of cuts out a, a step uh, that you would have to do on Photoshop. Now, so why I'm gonna invert this is so we're gonna invert this, right? And we are going to go to our paintbrush tool. We're gonna make sure we are in white. And we are going to go to about, same thing, 29, 30% opacity and flow. And we are going to draw in highlight. I'm gonna go across the forehead. I'm gonna get the, the nose, obviously. Now the reason we do it with the curves layer is so we can go back in this and we can actually change how bright we want that adjustment, right? So maybe we didn't want it as bright and we can bring it down to where we want it. Now we're going to do the same thing, another curves layer, bring it down. Now we're going to do our burning. So what we'll do is we'll group these together and then we can see the before and after. So that's the before and the after of the adjustments. Now what's nice is that you can do the same thing. You can go in and you can adjust how much of that adjustment that you did. You can even go back in. Let's say like maybe I want to fix this contour on this side because I don't really like it. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to switch our paintbrush to a black and we're going to paint over that. And we're going to get kind of rid of that right there. And so we'll go ahead and take it down just a little bit. But then that is our before and our after. So you can see it just, I mean, I think it looks pretty decent. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I do. But yeah, thanks for, thanks for watching. Let me know what kind of videos you guys want to see. If I should do more tutorials like this, a little bit more in depth, maybe shorter ones. Let me know, but uh, make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter because that's where it's at. And uh, yeah, I still haven't figured this outro thing yet. But anyways, thanks for watching. This is my outro. <laughs> Thank ya. I don't even know why I did that. This whole screen's up. Wow, that was super lame. <laughs>